Hey y'all, it's Miss Hillikin, and today we're going to start uh, by talking about the building blocks of geometry. And before we get into what the actual building blocks of geometry are, we're going to talk about uh, the way vocabulary will appear in this course. So, of course, it'll start with the word, and then it'll have a definition of the word, and then there'll be a representation, which is how we draw the object. It's called a mathematical model and then we'll go over any naming conventions. So that's the type of letter you use, um, the symbols that are used to shorthand describe the object or the thing that we are describing or defining. And we are going to begin with the foundations of geometry, the point, the line, and the plane. Now they are referred to as the undefined terms. They are the foundation of geometry. And the most basic element of geometry is the point. And a point can be defined as a location in space with no size, no length, no width, no depth. And it's modeled with a dot. And we always name them with a capital letter. So for example, dot A means that is point A. Now the second term is line. And it is defined as a straight continuous arrangement of infinitely many points. And the model, of course, looks like a little line segment with two arrows indicating that it goes uh, in both directions forever. Now, there are two ways of naming lines depending on if the line you are given uh, contains named points or not. So if there are no named points on the line, and I just have the line, we often use a cursive lowercase l and a subscript to indicate uh, more than one line. So this is a picture of line one. Um, and if I have two lines, I can make the second one line subscript two, line subscript three, so on and so forth. Now, if the line actually contains named points, then I can name the line by the points. So this example here has A and B on it. And so I would call this line, line AB or line BA, the order doesn't matter. And the way I would write it is to use the capital letters, A and B, and then I put the line symbol over it. And the third foundation term is plane. And it is a flat surface that extends infinitely along its length and width, but has no thickness. So it has two dimensions, but not a third. And the model we draw is a parallelogram, and the parallelogram can go either slant that way or it can slant the other direction. It, it really doesn't matter. Um, and they are named by a capital letter, but this time in cursive. So for example, this is plain P, and I drew a cursive P in that corner there to indicate that's what it is named. Now we have some additional vocabulary that we're going to need to define a couple more things. So first, we're going to define collinear, and this term should be familiar from Algebra 1. It means three or more points that are on the same line. And I have a little star here next to the three, because one of Euclid's postulates said if I have two points, any two points, they create a single line that goes through them. And so any two points are collinear, so the definition we give specifically states three or more points on the same line. Now here is the mathematical model showing that points A, B, and C are collinear. So I draw the line and I draw all three points on that same line. Now similarly objects can be coplanar and that means that they exist in the same plane. So I drew my parallelogram with uh, to represent my plane and I drew the points D, E, and F. And so according to this drawing, D, E, and F are coplanar. So now the reason why I want the definition of collinear is so that I can define what a line segment is. Uh, it is two points that are called endpoints, and all of the points between them that are collinear with those two points. So I have two points and all of the collinear points between them. That is what a line segment is. Most people think of it as just like a piece of a line, same thing. 
Now we name them by their endpoints and so I can say line segment AB or line segment BA. The order does not matter in this case and so the symbol for line segment is just that bar over the two letters. Okay, so now that we have line segments, we can talk about this uh, idea of congruence in geometry. So line segment AB and BA are objects, they are things. Okay, they're not numbers, they're not quantities. And if I want to represent the length of AB, which means the shortest distance between the points A and B, I have two ways of writing it. One way is to write the two endpoints that I want to find the distance between with no symbol above it. If there's no symbol and just those two letters, that is geometry shorthand for tell me the distance between the points A and B. Now if I'm actually talking about a line segment, I can use this little m. Now you're used to m in Algebra 1 representing slope. But this doesn't mean the slope of line segment AB in geometry. This means the measure of line segment AB. That little m in front of a geometric symbol in a geometry class means measure. In, in the case of a line segment, that means the length of the line segment. Now these two symbolically represent numbers. They no longer represent the object, the line segment. They represent a quantity. Okay. Now that's important because of the way I write things. So here's an example of a triangle where two sides are both three inches long. So I can say the measure of AB equals three inches. I can use the symbol of equal because I have two values. This is a measure and that's a measure. Numbers are values, they can equal each other. And I can say BC, which is the distance between the points B and C, is three inches, so I can also use an equal symbol because they're numbers. But if I want to talk about the objects AB and BC, I don't use equal. I wouldn't say AB equals BC because they're objects, they're not values. So instead, I use an equal sign with a squiggle above it, which represents congruent to. And we use this symbol when we're talking about objects that are identical. In the case of line segments, that means line segments of the same length. And this takes us to our first conjecture in geometry, and it simply states that two line segments are congruent if and only if they have the same measure or length. And if you rem remember from the previous video where I talked about conditional statements, if and only if means that this statement is true in both directions. So if I have two line segments that are congruent, then their measure is equal. Or I can say if I have two line segments with the same measure, they are congruent. Now that we have this idea of congruence and symbols for equal, uh, we're going to talk about the word midpoint. A midpoint is a point on a line segment, not a line. Lines do not have midpoints, neither do rays. A point on a line segment that is the same distance from both endpoints. Now the midpoint is said to bisect the segment into two congruent segments. The word bisect means to cut in half. So this picture here, if I have draw this picture, and it comes with this little statement here that AM equals MB, meaning the distance between A and M and the distance between M and B um, are equal, that means that M is the midpoint of line segment AB. And that's because all three of these points are collinear. Now I can get tricky on you and I can set up a situation where I don't necessarily say anything about them being on the same line, but I can say AM is equal to MB and the situation when I draw it out could actually be this. In this case, M is not the midpoint because these three points are not collinear. Now, I don't always write out like the equality or the congruence. Sometimes instead I will mark the figure. So if I want to mark line segments as congruent, I use tick marks. And so if I draw one tick mark there and one tick mark there, that tells you that AM is equal to MB. If it, it's an even shorter notation than actually having to write out an equality or a congruent statement. And if I have a more complex picture where maybe two things are congruent and another two things are congruent, 
um, I can change the number of tick marks to show that now these two are equal, right? And this is really important when I have things like polygons or really complex webs of, of lines and line segments, um, like this hexagon here, right? I have one set of tick marks, two sets of tick marks, and three sets of tick marks. And what they mean uh, is that A and B, AB, line segment AB, and line segment DE are congruent because they both have one tick mark. Now that means A, F, and CD are congruent because they both have two tick marks. And F, E, and B, C are congruent because they each have three tick marks. Now I have no idea how A, B relates to B, C, relates to C, D. All I know is that this is congruent to that, that is congruent to that, and that is congruent to that. And so sometimes reading geometry isn't just being able to read this symbol, but also how to read how a figure has been marked. All right, so now we go on to the final part of one of our undefinable terms, and uh, we're going to define the word ray. And you notice I kind of changed some things here. Um, it's the part of a line that contains an endpoint that is on the line, and all of the points of the line that are on the same side of the endpoint. So for example, this is the mathematical model of a ray. It has a point on the end and an arrow on the other side. Um, this is called ray AB, and it's shorthand, uh, uh, you write it shorthand as an AB with a little ray symbol above it. Notice there's only one arrow. And the order absolutely matters with rays, okay? This is ray AB because this first letter is always the end point. And that other letter is any other point on the ray that indicates the direction, right? And so in this case, it would be B. So a, ray AB is not identical and not congruent to ray BA because if I write it this way, I'm telling everybody that B is the end point and A indicates the direction, okay? So that is a key this first letter in the definition of your ray has to be the endpoint. And so then I have a question. So I have this picture here of a line AB, and I have ray AB and ray BA, and I have C. So which ray is the point C on? Right? And because the order matters, endpoint of A going in the direction of B, C is on AB, but it's not on BA because BA starts at B and goes this direction towards A. So the order matters for rays because they're directional. Line segments aren't directional. Lines really aren't directional. So they don't matter in terms of the order of the letters, but rays do.